welcome to the topic 1.5.1 stack frame analysis in the section 1.5 application of stack in C stack is not only relevant to C it is a general idea of arrangement of things how that idea is applicable to C program and obviously it is relevant to the arrangement of data in a program is all the data of a C program arranged in this fashion or a specific data is arranged in this fashion we will see how the arrangement of stack is applicable in the context of program execution right also in an animated view we will see the dynamics of stack operation how a stack is built one after the other and how it unwinds it the all those detailed discussion we will have in this video let's continue with, with the context setting in a more detailed fashion program execution sequence in c a program in c is nothing but set of functions executed sequentially we will see the dynamics of uh, function execution in c here function f1 invokes f2 f2 invokes f3 and f3 invokes f4 once f4 finishes again the execution control comes back to f3 again from f3 it goes back to f2 and finally f1 this is one of the example we will see one more uh, example which shows a different uh, execution sequence f1 invokes f2 f2 completes its execution again goes back to f1 f1 again invokes other function f3 f3 once again invokes f2 again f2 completes its execution execution control goes back to f3 and finally f1 and the program completes and f1 is also done right next if you have closely observed the execution sequence there is a natural alignment to a stack operations imagine a stack of plates for the guests you pop one after the other and distribute to your guest right the same way the functions executing one after the other and completing or popping out on the last in first out basis right now we will again continue with looking into the acrobatics of function execution with its local data the function while it executes it has to carry along with it the data associated with it f1 code accessing f1 data it has to allocate the memory for its specific data again when f1 invokes f2 f2 also should bring along with it the data pertaining to that when f2 is executing f2 should only access f2 data it is incorrect for f2 to allow access to f1 data again f2 invokes f3 f3 brings along with it f3 data right same thing continues with f4 now the interesting factor is when f4 finishes its execution the execution control should go back to f3 and also the f3 data part should also unwind again same thing has to continue with f3 even the execution control goes back to f2 f3 also should unwind same thing here right this is pretty much interesting now we will look into the realization of function execution sequence how exactly it is implemented when you think about the realization you think about the processor you have a address of an instruction in a pc the natural flow of operation of a processor is continuous execution of the instructions in the subsequent address pc goes on incrementing we need to curtail this flow of operation of a processor when a function is invoked when a function is invoked there is an immediate jump of execution control to the calling function again it has to come back when it has to come back we need to induce a mechanism to curtail the flow of processor operations we will see how this can be achieved arrangement of function 
specific data in the memory. We saw it, it is a natural uh, alignment to it, the stack operations, right? Here we go, F1 code brings up its data, right? Accesses the data for operations. And when F2 code, F1 code invokes F2, takes a precautionary measure, to store the the next instruction address in the stack region in the current stack frame then invokes f2 right f2 brings up its specific data and when f2 wants to invoke f3 takes a precautionary measure stores the next address in its specific data or stack frame and then invokes f3 f3 again brings up its own data see now when the f3 completes the function execution it unwinds f3 pops out now f2 address is brought back to the pc right the program counter when it comes back naturally the execution control moves back to f2 same thing happens now f2 is unwinded now f1 address is brought back to the program counter when it comes back to the program counter naturally the execution control moves back to f1 this is how in abstract uh, how the natural flow of processor operation is curtailed and uh, induce the program execution sequence or implements the program execution sequence right again f1 data is popped out and f1 code is also popped out and the execution of program is completed next does the program contain only function specific data or one or more functions will share some data is there a need for that to share obviously yes functions need to share the data all those data will be called as a global data where one or more functions will uh, access this data and its presence is felt throughout the program so if you uh, look back into section 1 uh, chapter 1.2 or 1.3 you mentioned that the lifetime of this global data is throughout right so now f1 code when it comes into picture allocates f1 specific data accesses it and prior to invocation of f2 saves the f1 data in the f1 specific data invokes f2 again f2 will uh, allocate memory for f for its f2 specific data accesses it prior to invoking f3 saves it uh, saves the return address so that it can safely come back to f2 for execution this is how the dynamics uh, happen and uh, this is how the execution control unwinds data function specific data is removed but not the global data right all right with this now we will classify the program how a program is classified right on a broader aspect the program is classified as code and data further classification of code there is nothing more but data does have the classification as linear data function specific data and dynamic data more on dynamic data we will be discussing in the next uh, section 1.6 but uh, the name linear data which uh, i have given is because of the arrangement of uh, data linearly so that uh, data is called global data or data segment function specific data call it as a stack segment and dynamic data we call it as heap segment and uh, the name comes uh, uh, by the way it is arranged data segment it is linearly arranged stack it is one after the other and when it when the 
when it pops up it will pop up one after the other and the heap is arranged in this fashion right this is the arrangement of uh, memory in the stack the function specific data will be relevant only when the, that particular function is ex executed right when the function is over that particular frame is popped up and this is how the addresses in this region is arranged so that the system can manage the allocation and deallocation of memory more on this we will be discussing in the next uh, section right next programs memory layout the snapshot of the uh, memory which contains the program right when you peep into the memory by, during the execution of a program how it looks like this is what uh, the program contains code data heap and stack this could be the addresses right and uh, uh, the size of code and data is fixed that means it will have a fixed memory footprint that is uh, the code cannot be uh, increased dynamically that means we cannot add an instruction while the code is executing unless you are writing a virus the same thing with data we cannot add or remove the global variables or uh, static variables or the variables which has been qualified by static right dynamically right hence it occupies the fixed size in the memory when it comes to stack the size of the stack frame is fixed that is the variables within a function is fixed whatever we write during a program that is all what we see in during execution but the stack segment uh, changes dynamically the size of a stack segment is not fixed it depends on the sequence of functions if ever if ever there were no if constructs and uh, looping constructs in a C pro in a C language stack would have been fixed stack segment size would have been fixed but because of these constructs right uh, the function executions may vary based on an if condition there can be a sequence of function executions sequence of 10 functions 100 or 1000 functions can be there right if the if condition is true i can execute 1000 if the if condition is false it falls back to around 2 or 3 or 4 functions so based on the dynamics of a program this stack segment size varies hence it is uh, shown as uh, dotted lines which indicates the size varies dynamically same thing with the heap more on heap we will uh, learn in the next uh, section 1.6 but uh, this is what we will be telling now to complete uh, the context to give a complete picture saying that even the uh, memory associated to this section is not fixed right we will be looking into the allocation of uh, memory for the program contents. Again, it's the same footprint. So we will look uh, back one step back and see when we do a dot slash a dot out when the executable is initiated for execution. How does the memory allocation takes place? Right. Again, I've taken the same address ranges. Code and data because of its fixed nature the fixed size the allocation is static one time allocation because the system knows about the size of this code and data and it is implicit allocation what do you mean by implicit programmer doesn't ask for the system to allocate memory for code and data if you just recollect have you ever uh, written a c statement right saying that uh, requesting the system to allocate memory for your code and data no and never the system implicitly allocate the memory for code and data to house code and data just before program execution 
just after dot slash a dot out is initiated and just before the start of the execution system will allocate memory for code and data next what about stack the allocation of memory for stack is dynamic and again implicit allocation right the memory for function specific data is allocated just before the function is executed or just when the function is invoked and just before the body of the function is executed that is it is dynamic in nature again it is implicit why implicit the programmer is not explicitly asking for allocation of memory we even don't know how this allocation will happen for data and stack if you remember your program if you have uh, declared a variable called int n globally or uh, and int m locally within a function we just access n is equal to 4 m is equal to 5 right from a, when you look at the program it is one and the same but when you get into the details when you go down to the details the dynamics changes right the allocation of memory is different right when it comes to heap the allocation of memory is dynamic and explicit allocation that is the allocation happens during the execution of function body this is a differentiator between the stack and the heap the allocation happens just before the body of the function is executed and the allocation for heap is during the execution of function body this makes a lot of difference right in addressing these sections right what next till now we have seen the dynamics of function execution sequence in a C program the contents of a C program classified into various segments its attributes and how the memory gets allocated to those uh, segments now we will look into the addressing modes how does the allocation of memory for various segments in particular data heap and stack influences the code addressing the contents of those segments all these things we will be discussing in the next session till then stay tuned if you have any questions or doubts or if you want to give some comments feedback feel free to do that in the same page of the video till we see you in the next session take care and bye bye